Hey guys, this is Charles Jager with premiumbeat.com. In this tutorial, I wanna share with you some easy compositing techniques you can use to create more professional titles inside of After Effects. Most of these techniques can be used on 2D and 3D titles. Let's take a look at the finished versions of our four title examples. build and break down some various title examples and we're going to use some core compositing principles to help give our titles more of a professional edge. I see a lot of these techniques used on movie trailer titles and bigger budget projects but we can do the same effects right here in After Effects. Before we get started I do want to mention you can download the project file for this tutorial on Premium Beats blog. It has the final versions for all the titles I'm going to be showcasing today so you can always download that and then do an even deeper dive into it if you would like. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with our first title set. You can see I have some titles here over a black background. We can pretend that this is the end of a movie trailer. And as it looks right now, a few quick effects I might throw on there might be like a gradient, give this a little more dimension, and then I might adjust the opacity and have it fade in. But we can take this a little bit further and really give this a more professional look. And so the first thing I wanna do on this text, since it is 2D, is I'm just gonna leave it white as is. Then I'm gonna come down here to the text layer I'm gonna make it 3D by checking on that 3D box there. So what we can actually do now is we can actually light this text and reveal it with a point light in the After Effects 3D space. And that's gonna give us a much nicer kind of color gradient fall off than we would get if we just applied a gradient effect onto this text. So I'm gonna come over here to the gray area. I'm just gonna right click. I'm gonna select new light. We're gonna have our light options here and I'm gonna select the point light. It should be that usually as default. And then for color, I'll just have it be white and the intensity be 100 and just go ahead and click OK. And now we can see that light in our scene. And as it is right now, you can see it's altering the text here a little bit. We can see a little bit brighter area in the middle if I zoom in. And it's a little bit gray right here. But the way we can really emphasize this is by actually moving the point light around. So I'm gonna highlight this over the Z axis. I'm gonna click that. You can see I'm now moving the light forward and backwards. You can see as I bring it really forward, we go behind the actual text. And again, this is how we can actually do our reveal of our titles. You can see this looks much nicer much more cinematic looking. And if I wasn't gonna do a reveal, I could just leave it at a point like this, and you can see we're getting a nice kind of color gradient fall off, and really just giving this a little more production value for these really quick titles. So what I wanna do is I wanna move this forward on the Z axis, and I wanna make sure I'm at the very beginning of my timeline, and where that light is, I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard for position, and just go ahead and create a keyframe. And let's go ahead and just move down in time here at about five seconds or so. And on the Z axis, again, I just wanna move this back, kind of reveal it, the point where I want it to end, so somewhere right like that. And now we can see our titles being revealed there by the point light. Next, I like to apply a few different core compositing techniques onto my titles. Now, a lot of times we're looking to emulate kind of like the film look. If I zoom in on these titles, we're gonna see they're really overly sharp, and that's pretty common with whatever text we're using, depending on the font. But you can see we get some sharp kind of edges along the edge of the text here. And if this is moving or has subtle scale applied to it, some of those jagged edges can be a little bit more noticeable, kind of like a more edge. And we can give this a little bit more of a filmic look by applying a subtle blur onto that text. So what we can do is I'm just gonna right click over here and do a new adjustment layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and rename that blur. And with that adjustment layer selected, I'm gonna come here to effect. We're gonna navigate to blur and I'm just gonna use a Gaussian blur. And I'll zoom in on this so we can kind of see what's happening. I'm just gonna increase this a little bit you can see maybe to around two to four. You can see this is really blurring that out there, so maybe something like 2.5. And as we zoom out, you're gonna see the difference. It is gonna kind of round off the edges of everything there. And you can really notice it kind of on this A and the L right there. Just applying a very subtle blur. Again, I recommend something between two to four, depending on your font, whatever titles you're working with. I might actually bring that back down to two. And going along with that, I like to apply some grain to this, and that'll help break up any color banding, but also kind of emulate a film grain effect on these titles. And with this simple text here, that subtle grain movement will be noticeable and will kind of give it that filmic quality. So I'm just going to right click here and do a new adjustment layer again. And on this one, we'll name it grain. 
And with that selected, come here to effect. We're gonna come down to noise and we're gonna select noise. I'm gonna zoom back in here on our text and make sure this grain layer is above your blur. Obviously you don't wanna be blurring out the grain layer we're applying here. And I'm gonna increase this a little bit. I'm actually gonna check on to not use color noise. And you can see, we can kinda of see that grain texture there on top of our title text. I'm gonna leave it at 5%. We can do a quick RAM preview of this, see what it looks like. And now we can see that grain just giving it a little bit of texture onto our titles. I think that's a little bit too intense there at 5%, so I may bring that down to something like 3%, but this may be a little difficult to see with the compression of the tutorial too, so I'll leave that there just so you can see that. So I'm gonna dial this back down to something like 3%. The next technique that I see on modern titles all the time now is a little bit of subtle chromatic aberration. And this takes a few more steps to recreate on our titles here in After Effects, but it's still pretty easy to do. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna select my text down here, and we're gonna need to pre-compose this and duplicate it. So with that selected, come here to layer. We're gonna come down here to pre-compose. And we're gonna move all attributes into a new composition. And I'm just gonna call this title text one. And we'll go ahead and click okay. Now, when we do that, we'll see something's changed. And that's because when we pre-compose this, our layer is no longer 3D. So we just need to check that on to be 3D again. So again, we're gonna duplicate this composition now three times. Before we do that, I'm gonna apply an effect to this. It'll just save us a little more time. So with that title text composition selected, I'm gonna come up here to effect. We're gonna come down here to channel and we wanna select shift channels. And once that's applied, we need to duplicate this again two times. So I'm gonna hit control D on the keyboard with that selected twice. Command D on a Mac and you can see I've duplicated it three times. In order to create our chromatic aberration, we're gonna have a red, green, and a blue channel for this text. And what I like to do is just come over to this color tag and just go ahead and change these to the colors we're gonna be working with. So I'm gonna have a red one, I'm gonna have a green one, and then a blue one. That just kind of helps us visually know which is which. And on the top one that's red right here, with that one selected, I'm gonna come over to the effects here and we're gonna have it take red from red, take green from full off, and take blue from full off. So now we should just see that red channel there. And if we come down here to mode, we need to set this to a screen blending mode. And then we'll come down here to the next title composition, the green set here. And with that selected, we'll come here to take red from full off, take green from green, and take blue from full off. So again, we're just isolating that channel, and we're gonna set that to be a screen mode as well. And now for our final composition here, the blue text, we're gonna have it take red from full off, take green from full off, and take blue from blue. And now we can leave that as a normal blending mode since it's on the bottom. And now we can see our text looks just as it did before because all this RGB, red, green, and blue is blending together to recreate our original titles. Now with all those steps completed, we can actually apply some chromatic aberration onto this. So I'm gonna select the red composition right here for our text. We're gonna come here to effect and go to distort. And we're gonna use the optics compensation effect. And if I zoom in here and just move over, we're gonna see what this is gonna do, kind of fray the edges here. So I'm gonna check on to reverse the lens distortion. And when I increase the field of view, we're gonna see how that's kind of pulling at the edges there to separate that out. And you can now see, you know, as I really dial this up, we can see some intense chromatic aberration happening around the edges. So it's kind of fraying. And we could always keyframe this if we want to adjust this, maybe have like a glitch effect, but you can see how it kind of affects the outsides more than the center. And using the objects compensation effect is better than using a scale effect because you know, it's kind of emulating what a real lens would actually do around the edges. So I'm gonna dial this back down significantly. We want this to be very subtle. If I zoom in here, I might just increase this a little bit more for the tutorial just so y'all can see it a little easier. So something like this is probably what I would have it set to. So maybe like 20 or less here. You can see we're just getting a slight red edge on everything and blue on the inside just around the outside edges. And again, that's something that I see now very common on trailers and movie titles. All right, so now we're looking at another composition with another title set in it. And what I wanna show you now is how to do some text tracking. So you can see I have this digital space title here. And I'm gonna select the text. And what I wanna do is I wanna have the letters kind of spread apart from each other over time. Again, this is another common thing I see on titles. And the way we're gonna do this is with our text selected, I'm just gonna to toggle this down. We're gonna come out here to our text and we're gonna go over to animate and I'm gonna select that and we're gonna select tracking. 
This is gonna allow us to animate the tracking of our text over time. So if we come out here and look at tracking amount, you can see as I increase this, what it's doing to our titles here, how it's kind of spreading them apart. And so I'm gonna set this back down at zero. Now if we go ahead and ram preview this, we can see how it's causing our text to spread out evenly over time for our titles. Now just as we did with our chromatic aberration example, we can use the optic compensation effect to add some more dimension to our titles, except in this case, we're gonna actually use it on everything in our scene. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click here and do a new adjustment layer. I'm just gonna rename this optics. And I'm gonna move it just above here underneath the vignette because I don't want it to affect the black bars or the actual vignette in this case, but I do want it to kind of bend this grid that we have applied in the background and subtly kind of affect the text here. And that'll be more noticeable as the text spreads out over time since we did that text tracking effect. So on that adjustment layer with it selected, I'm coming to effect. And we're gonna come down here to distort and I'm gonna select again optics compensation. And again, I wanna go ahead and check on reverse lens distortion and we're gonna adjust this over time. So you'll see as I increase the field of view here, how it's kind of pulling at the edges and we can see how it's kind of affecting that grid here that's applied in the background. So I'm gonna have this start at the very beginning here, somewhere around 78. And we'll just move down here to the end of our titles and go ahead and increase this. You can see how it's kind of pulling and warping the titles there, just kind of giving a little more dimension. And then we can go ahead and ramp preview and see the final effect of this on our titles. All right, moving on to another title set. What I've got here is a very basic title, but as it is right now, the background on this title doesn't look very interesting. And again, we could always apply kind of a color gradient effect onto this, but I feel that giving it three dimensional lighting will help accent it and give it a lot more cinematic production value. So what we're gonna do in this case here is I've got a background layer here and it is 3D. I went ahead and just toggle that in to be 3D. It's a solid color. And what we're gonna do in this example is actually use a spotlight. So I'm gonna right click over here. We're gonna do a new light. I'm gonna have this be a spotlight. This gives us a few more options that we can adjust with the cone angle and cone feather of the light. So I'm gonna go ahead and select OK. And now we can see we have this light here and I'm gonna move this up. And what I would like is kind of have this light look as if it's kind of coming from the very top center and kind of revealing and kind of falling off gradually around this title set. So I'm just gonna angle this down. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit AA here with the light selected and that's gonna bring up all the different light options. And so we can come down here to cone angle and widen that quite a bit. Now we can already see this looks a lot nicer. So I may increase the intensity here a little bit. Just again, increasing that cone feather. And we can also adjust the light in space, kind of widen that out. And we can adjust kind of where it's pointing to again as well. So I might want this to be a little brighter up here toward the top. And if the guides from the lighting are kind of getting in your way, what you can do is hold control shift H to make those disappear, that'd be Command Shift H on a Mac. And that just allows you to see your background a little bit easier. And then you can just do that again, Control Shift H to bring the lighting options back up. But I think this looks pretty good as is. We get this nice gradient here with the shadow. And again, just kind of gives it more of a three dimensional look. Another thing we could do is we could always keyframe kind of the point of interest here with the light. And you could animate this background as well. And this is just another easy option you kind of have at your disposal to give some simple titles a little more of a professional look. Now with our final set of titles here we're going to be looking at, we can use 3D lights again here to light up our titles in different ways and even allow us to light up real footage elements that we place in the background. So let me go ahead and kind of break this down here. So what I've got is just some 3D text and a simple light here lighting this up. But I've got two other point lights here that I'm going to turn on and I'm kind of emulating police lights with these. So you can see as I scroll through here, we're getting these blue and red flashes on the text. And the way this is being done is I have a red point light and a blue point light, and I can just select these. And we can come up here to layer and the light settings. You can see it's just a red light, and the other one is a blue light. And go ahead and click OK. And what I've done, so I'll hit U on the keyboard here for the light options for the intensity. I just went in here and keyframed the intensity of those lights to change and vary over time. So you can see it's increasing up to somewhere around 50 and then lowering back down to around 6% or 0%. And that's what's creating that flicker and we're seeing that now applied onto our titles. However, let's say I want to make this a little more interesting and apply some dust and light elements in the background here. So what I have here is this dust layer and I'll go ahead and turn this on. And this is a free dust layer you can download as well from Rocket Stock. It's from their 4K volumetric light and dust overlays. 
And I'll have the link where you can download those on the blog post for this tutorial. So make sure you go ahead and check that out as well. But you can see when I turn on that dust element, as we scroll through here, it doesn't look quite right because the dust is being lit kind of this golden color and we have these different blue and red lights and they're hitting our title text here and it just doesn't look as if these are actually in the same scene. It looks like two different scenes composited together and it doesn't look very professional. A simple fix we can do with this though, really easy. All we're gonna do is with that dust layer, we're just gonna check it on to be a 3D layer. And when we do that, now that dust layer is gonna be lit up by the red and blue lights we have flickering in our scene. And you can see how quick and easy it was for us to kind of composite that into our shot. And you can see with that dust layer, I can move it in 3D space, so sometimes it might be a little too close, but you can see as I move it further back, it's gonna kind of be revealed to be lit up more by those lights. And what you wanna do in this case is just hit S on the keyboard for scale and make sure that covers up the entire size of your composition. That way you're not getting any black edges where that falls off. But now you can see it's just very quick and easy for us to composite that into this scene. So now it's being lit up by those two lights flickering. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and picked up a few tips and techniques you can use when using compositing effects on your own titles. And as always, check out the other tutorials that are available on Premium Beat's blog. This has been Charles Jager with Premium Beat. Thanks for watching. <laughs>